Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 14th October 2018. I am Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company Superior Profit, or more importantly, how it may help in your trading, you can visit the website superiorprofit.co and click on the about menu. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual in today's topics, we look at the commodities oil and gold. We'll analyze them using technical charts. These commodities tend to impact related stocks. When swing trading stocks, we like to align them in the direction of the market. We will study market's direction using market breadth of NASDAQ and NYSE and the technical charts of the four broad market ETFs. In addition to aligning trades with the market's direction, we like to align them with the industry strength. We'll study industry strength using industry scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may review some of the recent trade ideas shared in our traders forum and look for trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our commodities analysis with oil. We are looking at the oil ETF USO. We are analyzing it with weekly backdrop chart and daily hop on chart. Together we call this at a glance template because it helps us decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge of the chart in only a few seconds. In the weekly chart, one week ago we had a candle with long upper tail. This week, candle color flipped from cyan, that is bullish, to magenta, that is bearish. In last Friday's market roundup, I had discussed that price was closing at the upper boundary lines that was too overbought for us to take any swing trade. That was a wise decision because oil dropped from there. At the right edge, there is no swing trade signal in oil. Gold ETF GLD For several weeks, gold weekly backdrop color had turned cyan. However, it was below the memory resistance line. In the last market roundup, I mentioned that we will not take a long trade in GLD until price could break out above this memory resistance line. That happened this week. GLD went up with extreme high activity and it broke above the memory resistance line. In the daily chart, there were several memory resistance lines. On Thursday, gold broke out of all of them with a sharply bullish move. On Friday, we have a narrow ridge ca candle inside the body of Thursday's candle. In the coming days, if gold can move out of the high of Thursday's candle, you may look for a breakout long entry opportunity. 
Alternatively, if gold comes down a little bit from here and goes up again, giving us a cyan color candle that may give a go with flow trend following long trade opportunity. From commodities analysis, we now move to market breadth analysis. We are looking at NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index, both using weekly charts. Along with three pairs of internals, new high low, advanced decline and up down volume. Because this analysis is using broad indices and longer term weekly interval, this is to be used more for long term investment decisions, not for swing trading so much and certainly not for day trading. For several weeks now, we are seeing NASDAQ and NYSE are rotating their leadership. Last week, NASDAQ was weaker than NYSE. And this week, NASDAQ became stronger than NYSE, though both dropped. In NASDAQ, we have a long lower tail candle with solid body that is a mixed shape candle. In NYSE, the candle is mostly bearish with a long solid body. NASDAQ could recover at the end of the week, closing just above the memory support lines. NYSE recovered somewhat on Friday, however closed clearly below the memory support lines. What about the internals? Internals are showing a mixed picture. Though both the indices drop, four of the internals, in fact, went up and closed above zero. Only new high low for both NASDAQ and NYSE went down and closed below zero. Let's see if the same indecision is there in the market ETFs as well. S&P 500 ETF SPY. This week it dropped sharply. The weekly candle closed below the memory support line, however very close to it. In the daily chart, we can see that for the whole week it dropped. On Friday, it recovered significantly, however ended still with a bearish color candle. It bounced right from the white direction line. If price continues to go up next week, that may give low risk reversal kind of trades in the coming days. NASDAQ 100 ETF QQQ. QQQ also dropped. However, near the end of the week, it reversed and recovered significantly. It closed comfortably above the memory support lines. In the daily chart, on Thursday, it closed just above the white direction line and on Friday, it ended with a bullish shape candle. Similar to SPY, if this continues to go up, then it may give low risk reversal trade setups in the coming days. Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA This week it dropped but precisely closed above this memory direction line and reversed from the lower memory trend lines. In the daily chart, we can see that after displaying the bearish headwind, it dropped sharply. The bearish headwind could catch the very top of Dia. On Friday, it recovered, though the candle ended with bearish color red. Again, if it continues to go up, it may give rise to low risk reversal trade setups in underlying stocks. 
Russell 2000 ETF IWM. Looking back, you can see that the bearish headwind in the weekly chart could catch the very top. Since then, price dropped heavily. This week, price came very close to the memory support line. In fact, broke below that, though closed very close to the memory support line. The sharp drop is evident in the daily chart as well. Will it go up next week? It may go up if the other ETFs also go up. As this is the weakest ETF, instead of looking for buy opportunity in this, you may look for buy opportunity in the other ETFs or even better in the underlying stocks of the other ETFs. Probably in QQQ or its underlying stocks because QQQ seems to be the strongest right now. We saw that market breadth and market ETFs both were bearish, however, they recovered at the end of the week. Several of the ETFs are near support. That is giving a mixed picture. The market is bearish but at near support. Let us see if we can gather further insight from the sector and industry analysis. Four week sector performance. We are studying the 11 sectors across four review periods. Red bar represents performance of this week. Green bar performance of one week prior to the red bar. And blue bar represents performance of two weeks prior to the green bar. Together they represent four weeks or about one month of performance. All the nine sectors declined this week heavily showing a bearish picture at the sector level. Information technology sector continues to be one of the worst performers. It may be wise to avoid buying stocks right now in this sector. If you remember last week's market roundup, utilities was the strongest sector. This week it declined. However, it declined by the smallest percentage. And remember the two stocks EBR and SPS that we discussed in previous market roundup. They continued to go up even though utilities as a sector went down. EBR and SBS went up by 11.5 and 7.2% respectively. This shows the effectiveness of 360 degrees analysis that identify stocks where all the factors fundamental, technical and industry forces are aligned. Let us study the sectors from Q edge and then look at the two stocks EBR and SPS to see how they went up further since our discussion one week ago. Sector analysis. We are studying the 11 sectors using scorecard and heat map. Cyan color represents strength and magenta represents weakness. We are studying the sectors across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently in the recent days. Instantly from the heat map we can see that utilities is the best performing sector right now followed by consumer staples. The weakest sectors are industrials and information technology. Therefore, if you are going to look for buy setups, it would be better to look for them in utilities and consumer staples. If you are holding stocks in infotech or industrials, you may be cautious and you may even look for short opportunities in them. In general, the market is bearish right now. It may be easier and more profitable to look for opportunities on the short side than on the long side.
let us look at the two utility stocks that we discussed last week. We will study them using technical charts. EBR. In the last market roundup, I discussed that EBR gave a go with flow trend following long trade setup on this candle. It hit the upper boundary level that is the initial profit target in one day. As the fundamental, technical and industry all were bullish following Q guideline, you could book partial profit and then hold on to partial position trying to let profit run. That would be the right decision because this week EBR went up again. From the daily chart we can see that it had a sharp move up. Now it pulled back little bit. If it goes up again next week, it may give us yet another trend following long trade setup. SPS, the second utility stock we discussed in the previous market roundup. SPS gave a trend following go with flow long trade setup on this candle. Since then price went up. It pulled back little bit. Next week if it goes up, it may give another trend following long trade setup. You may keep an eye for that. From sector study, we move on to industry study. We are looking at the 10 best performing industries of this week. We are analyzing them using their 5 day scores and 10 day scores. The best performing industries are either in defensive sectors like gold, utilities or are related to day-to-day -day consumer spending like hypermarket and supercenter, restaurants, department stores, drug retails, tobacco. This shows that the best performing industries are generally in defensive industries. That doesn't show the bullishness of the market. The market is fragile this week. Therefore, it may not be the best time to look for buy opportunities. Having said that, I drill down into some of these industries. In general merchandise stores, I found the stock BIG, big, that is optimally valued. It may give a low risk buying opportunity in the coming days. Let's study the best performing industries from QH. Specifically locate general merchandise stores and then drill down into big. In QH, the best performing industries of the week are shown with cyan color over 5 days period. General merchandise stores is one that is strong now. Let us drill down. From the color coding, we can instantly identify big as one with optimal valuation. In fact, it is the only stock in this industry that is having cyan color in the valuation column. That is the only stock that is having good value. Let's look at its technical charts. BIG big. In the weekly chart, one week ago it had a candle with long lower tail and this week price went up, color changed to cyan that is bullish. In the daily chart, big displayed a bullish headwind that could catch once again the very bottom of the stock. In this area it went up made a higher high. Since then it is moving sideways. On Friday we have a cyan color candle. However the candle has an upper tail. Therefore we might not 
take a long trade on Friday itself. We may wait to see if price is going up on Monday and if it does so, you may use the Q fine tune chart to look for precise long entry opportunity. As I mentioned already, the market was fragile this week. Therefore, it may be better not to look for many buy opportunities. Instead, look for low risk short opportunities. Where will we find the short opportunities? We will find them in the worst performing industries. Let's have a look at the worst performing industries of the week. These are 10 of the worst performing industries. In the auto parts and equipment industry, APTV is a stock that is overvalued. It also has negative earnings growth. Therefore, it is one stock that has all the forces against it. Industry is weak, valuation is poor, earnings growth is negative. These are the kind of stocks where we will like to look for short trades. It gave a go with flow trend following short setup on 4th October and it fell since then. This week it fell by another 6.3%. Industrial machinery is very weak now. Over 10 days, it has somewhat higher score, though it is still weak, than over 5 days. Looking at the industrial machinery's weakness in the scorecard and heat map, you could avoid buying stocks in this industry. That would be a wise approach. Even though Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF DIA was going up recently, drilling down and looking at this specific industry, you would avoid buying stocks in the industry. That would be very useful. This week, every stock in this industry dropped massively by between 4.6 to 16.4%. In this case, looking at the industry rotation helped you stay out of trouble. Let's look at the worst performing industries in QH. Look at auto parts and equipment industry, drill down to APTV and also look at some of the stocks in industrial machinery industry. In QH, the worst performing industries are shown with magenta color over 5 days period column. Auto parts and equipment. This industry is weak for a long time. Let's drill down. Instantly, we can see that APTV is poorly valued, overvalued. And from the EPS columns, we can see that it has negative earnings growth over the yearly periods, 3 year, 2 year, and 1 year, as well as negative earnings growth over the three latest quarters. Revenue growth is also negative. These are the ideal stocks where we look for short opportunities. And it gave very profitable short opportunity. Let's look at the Q charts. APTV. It is in clear downtrend in the weekly chart. In daily chart, on this day, we had a go with flow short trade setup. It hit the lower boundary very next day. Partial profit could be booked at that time. As the industry, fundamental, as well as technical were weak, there would not be any reason to exit full position. One would hold on to partial position trying to let profit run. And that approach would give much higher profit as the stock fell further from there. Coming back to Q edge, industrial machinery. This is very weak now, the third worst performing industry of the week. 
looking to the right, we can see that it was stronger earlier relative to the current wave. If you drill down, you will see that in this week, each and every stock in the group dropped. If we sort, we can see that the drop ranged from minus 4.6% to 16.4%. Those are significant drops for one week. Looking at the industry's weakness, you could be careful and avoid taking long trades in these stocks that would serve you beautifully. Other than the worst and best performing industries, we also study the accelerating and decelerating industries. Accelerating industries are those that were behind and are starting to go up fast now. They may still be behind but they are gaining momentum. These are good industries to look for buy setups. We are looking at 10 of the most accelerating industries of the week. 8 of these 10 best performers are in consumer discretionary sector. You may look for buy opportunities in these. At the same time, you may wait for proper trade setup before taking any trade. When you study the stocks using Q charts, you will see that not many of them are flashing buy setups right now. It is worth keeping an eye on these consumer discretionary industries. These are consumer electronics, computer and electronics retail, internet and direct marketing retail, laser facilities, footwear, educational services, apparel retail, and apparel, accessories, and luxury goods. I drilled down into several of these industries but didn't find proper Q long trade setup in many of them. I could find one stock TPR in apparel, accessories, and luxury goods. It is optimally valued and has steady earnings as well as revenue growth. This stock has given a bounce long trade setup on Friday. You could take the long on Friday itself. If you didn't do that, you may look for a low risk buy opportunity in the coming week. Let's look at the accelerating industries from Q scorecard. Locate apparel, accessories and luxury goods and then drill down into TPR. In QH, the accelerating industries are shown by cyan color over PACE 5 days column. You can see several of the most accelerating industries are in consumer discretionary sector. Apparel, accessories and luxury goods is one of them. You can see its 5 day score is still not cyan. It is in between cyan and magenta. However, the paste column is showing that it is accelerating. By studying such acceleration, you are able to catch turnaround opportunities well ahead of others. While doing that, it would be nice to look for fundamentally strong stocks and we can identify such stocks easily by drilling down. Let's do that. Instantly, we can see TPR is a stock that is optimally valued. It has steady earnings growth over the yearly as well as the recent quarterly periods. All of them are in green color. And from the revenue columns, we can see it has very steady revenue growth as well. Let us look at its technical charts. TPR. In last two weeks, it dropped heavily and in the weekly chart it tried to go below the watermark support level but reversed closing just above it at the end of this week. In the daily chart the sharp fall is 
also very evident however on friday price reversed and closed above this watermark support line deep watermark support line during the down days activity was very heavy and on friday it reversed with heavy activity as well that made all the requirements of a queue bounce long trade setup you could take the long on friday itself if you didn't do that you could look for a potential buy opportunity in the coming days lastly we study the decelerating industries these are industries that were ahead earlier stronger earlier and now decelerating rapidly we are looking at these industries five days and ten days scores you can see for all of them this week's score is much lower than 10 day score you may look for short opportunities in these industries soft drinks is one of the decelerating industries i found this stock nbev that is overvalued with negative earnings growth so we could see one industry that is decelerating and a stock in the same industry that is overvalued with negative earnings growth these are best stocks for looking for short opportunities nbev fell beautifully after displaying a bearish headwind signal on friday 5th october and it dropped by a massive 26.9 percent after that looking at the decelerating industries looking at the bearish headwind and the poor fundamentals of the stock you could be ready and protect profit in any long position you might have when the bearish headwind appear and you could also probably profit handsomely by taking a short trade let us look at the decelerating industries from q scorecard look at soft drinks and then drill down into nbev decelerating industries are shown in q edge by magenta color over base five days column these are the industries that were relatively stronger earlier you can see that from the cyan colors over 10 days period and they all turned more magenta over five days period soft drinks is one of them it's of special interest because it was very cyan earlier and weakened rapidly it decelerated and it is one of the worst performers of the week let us drill down instantly from color coding we can see that nbev is overvalued and its earnings growth is also negative revenue growth in the recent quarter is negative as well weak industry decelerating industry weak fundamentals these are the stocks where we will look for short signals on technical charts and such signals came on q charts let's have a look at them nbev it had been one of the high flying stocks volatile stock as well went up very rapidly in this period then in the daily chart on this candle almost magically it displayed the bearish headwind signal and since then price dropped heavily when the bearish headwind came at minimum if you were holding any long position you would protect profit using trailing stop you could use q protection signal for that and you could also take a short trade at that time and profit handsomely from that those were the regular topics of the week let me summarize market breadth as well as market etf study are showing that the market is bearish sectors are also very bearish all of them fell sharply 
this is a weak market not the best time to look for long trades at the same time on Friday several of the broad indices as well as market ETFs found support either at white direction line or at memory support line looking at that one may be cautious in taking new short trades also the best approach may be to watch for the market's move in the coming days see which direction the market is going and then take trades in that direction if the market goes up we will look for long trades but we will look for them in stocks that are fundamentally strong and are giving Q long trade setups such setups may be more of reversal kind that is the headwind setup box or bound setups on the other hand if the market continues to drop we may look for short trades and those trades will be in stocks that are fundamentally weak and are giving low risk short opportunities and also in industries that are weak by doing that we are always able to identify trades where industry strength or weakness fundamental strength or weakness and technical strength or weakness are aligned together that is the superior profit investing approach that is all that I plan to share in today's session thank you for attending I look forward to seeing you in our next session have a great weekend and trade profitably